shadow of your wings I take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I call to you, God the Most High, to God who provides for me. May he send from heaven and save me and put to shame those who assail me. May God send his loving mercy and faithfulness. My soul lies down among lions who would devour the sons of men. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharpened sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. May your glory shine on earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Welcome to this Mass on Ash Wednesday the beginning of our journey through the Lenten season. A solemn but simple and stark liturgy tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and by repentance, by prayer, by fasting, and by self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. So let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithful. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their luck has never been of old, nor will again after them in ages to come. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, 
and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged. Gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room, let the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. And do not make your heritage a mockery by words among the nations. This is why it should be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. I shall. 
the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time, see now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault will be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have condemned ourselves in every way. Through great endurance and inflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true. As unknown and yet we are known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, 
and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Lent has begun. Here this morning, at the church door, we offered the sprinkling of ashes in this time of Covid crisis, not allowed to impose, but to sprinkle. And then again we did it at Deal. And on both occasions the rains came and the wind blew. But Lent has begun. All over the country, in fact all over the world, people will be giving things up. For some it'll be alcohol. For some it'll be chocolate. For some it might even be champagne and oysters. For some it will be swearing or name-calling. And so the list goes on. Somebody watching this tonight will have already started perhaps to think what they're going to give up. Not only adults do this, but children too. Children in our school think of what they can give up. But they might also think about taking on extra things. If we give something up, of course, we'll save some money. And we could give that money, perhaps, to a worthy cause. One problem with all of this is that it can so easily become part of that wellness movement which is so popular today. Whereas, in fact, Lent wants to take us way beyond even physical wellness but to a spiritual wholeness. People will tell you, well, if you stick at your giving up chocolate throughout Lent, there's no better time to start because you'll have a nice figure by the time the good weather comes. And by the time Easter arrives, you'll almost be ready for the joys of summer, fitter, happier, healthier, almost ready for that perfect bikini figure. But I'm afraid to tell you, that Lent for the Christian is much, much more challenging than all of that. It isn't yet another wellness program or a way to lose weight. Today, as I ash people here and in St Andrews in Deal, I use the words, from dust you came, and to dust you shall return. And then I sprinkle their heads with the palm cross ash from those burnt palm crosses of last year. What I was doing is I was giving people the news that they were going to die. 
From dust you came, to dust you will return. That's the sombre message with which the season of Lent begins. And that's why the Lent of cheery self-improvement is really such a con. It's not just about being healthier and fitter. It's about facing our own mortality. No amount of jogging will ever outpace old Father Time. No fancy cream, despite how well advertised on the television, or cosmetic, or a total makeover, even with lots of plastic surgery, can ever prevent us from coming into dust again. From dust you came, and to dust you will return. However obvious this is, much of our culture today is intent on hiding death away and denying its reality. I've often said that we used to be coy about sex, telling children that they were delivered by the stork. If you think this is rather silly, then you're right. But I think, in a sense, we are no less stupid about the way we talk about death today. We are coy about death rather than sex, referring to people as having gone to sleep or passed away. We don't even like to use the word dead or death. Most of us, and that includes myself, often feel speechless and don't know quite what to say when we are confronted with death. What do you say to somebody who is mortally ill and is going to die? It won't do to say, oh, everything will be all right, but I've heard it said. Oh, you'll be on your feet in no time, when clearly the person is terminally ill. And saying those things when it's patently not true is really not very fair. I think often these well-meaning lies prevent important conversations from ever taking place about the inevitable. How about a goodbye? I'm sorry, or I love you. Most people in times past used to die, of course, at home, surrounded by their families. Now we just Greatly are put into hospital, we have machines all around us, and even when we do die, our bodies are taken care of in a very clinical fashion. We go to an undertaker's, and everything is done for us. Most people today don't even want to see a body. My mother was always very embarrassed about anything connected with sexuality. I'm still waiting for her to tell her about the birds and bees, but she's dead now, so I'm going to just have to find out for myself. But she would be shocked that I was even using the word sexuality tonight in church. Her generation knew about death, but they were frightened of sex. We flipped that. But we cannot hide death away. And I think this prompts us on this Ash Wednesday, when we are starkly reminded about our mortality, it prompts some big questions about human life and about the purpose of life. What is it all about? What are we here for? And I'm amazed how many people have never even seen anyone that is dead these days. Death is something that scares us and frightens us. I think the problem with the Lent of healthy self-improvement, when we're just denying ourselves a bit of chocolate or ice cream or whatever, is that it's all about avoiding the big questions by living the dream of some kind of perpetual well-being. A full-on, proper spiritual Lent forces us to stop running away and face the simple truth Know that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. T.S. Eliot once said, Humankind cannot bear very much reality. How true Eliot was speaking. 
Our hope is that this last journey that we all have to take is the one we're not going to take on our own, but that our Lord, who has gone before us, is going to be with us and is going to be in that death with us. Thomas Merton, the great spiritual writer of our time, said the cross with which the ashes are traced upon us is the very sign of Christ's victory over death. The words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return, are not to be taken as the quasi-form of a kind of the sacrament of death, as if such a thing were possible. It might be good stoicism to receive a mere reminder of our condemnation to die, but that, says Merton, is not Christianity. But remember on this Ash Wednesday that the great evangelical preacher Dwight Moody, who gave us all those moody and sanky songs, once said, Christ never preached any funeral sermons. Christ never preached any funeral sermons. Death is something that we have to face. And on the very first day of Lent, the church in her wisdom gives us this stark reminder as I sprinkle ashes over the head of parishioners. Let this Lent be for us a time for the change of heart and a change of mind. A time for opening ourselves to God. I want to quote to you some words I found on Facebook and they hit me hard. The person writing on a Facebook post said, I generally find myself flat on my face at some point during Lent. Sometimes it's failing at one of my Lenten sacrifices. Other times it's finding myself sinning in other ways and frustrated that my Lenten plan hasn't brought me closer to Christ. I look back at all my good intentions and all my plans and I wonder what happened. It's because each year I forget that it's not my plans, as intentional as I am, that are going to make me holy. I can't make myself holy. I can't plan my way into heaven. No matter how good my plans are, no matter how upright my intentions, I am not going to get myself to heaven. God makes me holy. Our journey of Lent is to be allowing God to make us holy. So that when we hear those words, from dust you came and to dust you will return, they will not be words that frighten us but words that beckon us deeper into the very heart of God. God makes me holy. I'm now going to bless the ashes and as though these ashes will be placed over our heads as a reminder of our own mortality in the light of the resurrection. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, 
made through a steadfast observance of Lent, gain pardon for sins and newness of life. After the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. So let us now present our needs to God. A God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love. We pray for Justine, our Archbishop, for Norman, our Bishop, and Rose, Bishop of Dover, that they may know the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit they continue to serve God's will for the church in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may be an ambassador for Christ by announcing the good news of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Presently here today, and for those watching this Mass from their homes, that, may, that we may all have the will to change our lives and the lives of others by our charity, good example, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are estranged, that they may seek to be reconciled to those with whom they are in dispute. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering any way, that they may know the presence and comfort of the Lord. We pray in particular for Margaret Hordey, Margaret Bailey, Pat and Peter Brockway, Olga Calder, Daniel, Leo Fosdyke, Joyce Gash, David Irving, Brian Lamley, Nadi Marchand, Julie Nandy, Andrew Parkinson, Wenda Tefler, Neil Wright, Jean and Michael, Gillian, Father John and Penelope, Judith and John, Roy, Paul, Enoch Pritchard, John Dixon, Maureen, John White, and for all who suffer from the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that this Lenten season prepare us for the Passover from death to newness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the departed and for all those who find themselves bereaved at this time, we pray especially for Father Michael Anderson, Thomas Moore, Margaret Ann Smith, Judith Ann Jones, Susan Maskell, Laura Holland, and all those who have died due to COVID-19. At this time, we also pray for the anniversaries, including Philip Couchman, Nora Davenport, Charles Goodley, 
qui met trois étoiles. Grant, eternal grant to them, O Lord, and that thy perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. We pause for a moment to prepare us to present our private intentions to God our Father. Let us ask our Blessed Mother Mary to pray for us, with us, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our life. Heavenly Father, have mercy on your church in all its need. And as we turn away from sin, may we turn to you in repentance and embrace your holiness with all our heart. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, wherever you are.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of your life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his children. resist temptation by our Lenten works of charity and penance. And by this sacrifice may we be prepared to celebrate the death and the resurrection of Christ our Saviour, and so be cleansed from sin and renewed in spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. 
This is my body, which will be given up for you. and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord our God, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection and bring you the gift you have given us, the sacrifice of reconciliation. Therefore we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son, Fill us with his spirit through our sharing in this meal, and may he take away all that divides us. May this spirit keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Justin, our Archbishop, and Norman, our Bishop, with all the bishops and all your people. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You have gathered us here around the table of your Son, in fellowship with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints. In that new world where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race and language and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet through Jesus Christ the Lord. Through him with me. Our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And in this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to all of us who now receive.
takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to this song. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall Be among you and remain with you. 